Hi, and welcome to the information session. You will refer to this information session because you have indicated that you are interested in one of Wake Tech's nursing programs. And the nursing department does have specific requirements to be able to apply to their program. And this is above and beyond applying to Wake Tech. So registering for the nursing classes is really not as simple as just applying to the college. And we're going to cover those items in this information session. Now we have three different nursing programs. We have our practical nursing program. Once you've completed that program, you are eligible to sit for the NCLEX PN and you pass that and you are an LPN. This program begins one time a year in the spring semester. We also have our nursing program. The nursing program is an associate in applied science degree. And so students will com complete the program, be eligible to sit for the NCLEX RN. And once they pass that, they are then an RN, a registered nurse. And this program begins both in the fall and the spring. And then we have an LPN to RN advanced placement program. And this information session will not cover that program. So if you're an LPN and you accidentally um, clicked on this information session, go ahead and leave. And you want to do the LPN to RN advanced um, placement program information session. And that program begins one time a year in the summer. So some students want to know the difference between an LPN and an RN. So an LPN is a licensed practical nurse. And as an LPN, you will be responsible for patients who are relatively stable. You're going to monitor their overall health. You're going to take vital signs, check blood pressure. And then um, all your duties are going to be very practical. If you see any issues with the patient, then you would report them probably to the registered nurse who is overseeing you. The registered nurse is going to work with patients who are in need. They need medical attention. They need monitoring. And so as they get better, you monitor. As they get worse, you notify doctors, um, whoever you're reporting to. You can also oversee LPNs, CNAs, home health aides. So you have a management aspect to being an RN if, if you wanted. The one thing that we do not offer is a bachelor's degree. That is a BSN. A BSN can only be obtained at a four-year university. So students who have completed a, an RN program, for those students who have completed an Associate of Applied Science degree in nursing, can do an RN to BSN program. Uh, but again, Wake Tech doesn't offer that either. Um, if your goal is to have your bachelor's degree. You do not want to take any classes uh, for nursing at Wake Tech. You only want to take your general education courses. Then your major is going to be university transfer. And then once you complete those classes, you'll be able to transfer to a four-year university, um, hopefully be accepted in their nursing program. But just to clarify, as long, if you're not going to take any nursing classes here, your major should be the A10-100NU, so we know that that's what you're pursuing. Your advisor um, will be either at the Southern Wake or the Scott Northern Campus. At this time in 2023, Ariana Postel or Laura Katz can be, um, would be your advisor, but things change, and if Ariana or, and Laura are not here anymore, then just make sure that you schedule an appointment with the communication, social sciences, art and humanities advising team, or you can go to North or South campus for advising if you're planning to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in nursing. And you do not have to complete this information session. Students completing this information session should be students who want to take nursing classes at Wake Tech. And if you've called up and you've asked about our program, you have probably heard limited enrollment and you have heard competitive. What that means is we accept students into the nursing program based on points. 
So it's not a waiting list. Um, we do receive more applications than we have space. So we do highly recommend that anyone interested in our nursing programs have a backup plan or a parallel plan so that if you are not accepted into one of our nursing programs, you do have another program that you can continue with, complete, and graduate. So how do we determine your points? If you look at the program of study, you will see for practical nursing, you see that there's a total of seven classes. Three classes are nursing courses, those you cannot take. The other four classes are general education courses, and any student who has met the prerequisites can take those classes. You have your anatomy and physiology, your math, your English, and your psychology. So those are the four classes that students can take ahead of time, and you're going to receive points based on the grades you make in those classes. You have the same process for the nursing program. Nursing program, you see, um, there's five semesters of nursing classes and intermingled in those classes, you have nine general education courses. So you can see you have anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two. You have your English 111, you have your English 112, You've, there's two psychologies, a sociology, and microbiology and a humanities. So those classes students can take ahead of time and we're going to give them points based on the grades you make in those classes. And if you're not sure which program you're interested in or even if you wanted to apply to both practical nursing and nursing, you can. They're very similar in their general education courses. Both programs require that English 111, the the freshman composition course. Both require psychology 150, general psychology. Both require anatomy and physiology. Now, for practical nursing, it is a five credit hour. Biology 163 is the entire body system in one semester. Nursing has a total of eight credit hours for anatomy and physiology. They have ANP1, which is Biology 168, and we have ANP2, which is Anatomy and Physiology 2. If you complete the 168 and 169 for nursing, and you decide to apply to practical nursing, we will accept the 168 and 169 for 163. So you do not have to take the Biology 163 course for practical nursing if you have 168 and 169 already completed. The only class that is not the same is the math course. Practical nursing has a math class required. Nursing does not have a math class required, but they do have a math proficiency, which we will talk about again. Um, both programs do have a 10-year window on their math, so you have to have had um, meet the math for either program within 10 years of beginning the program. And the math course for practical nursing can be any college level math course, math 110 or higher, that has been completed within 10 years of beginning the nursing program. We do accept transfer credits. So we have a lot of students that have um, come to Wake Tech that have several transcripts. You need to submit those official transcripts to Wake Tech. The registrar evaluates those transcripts. Advisors do not evaluate transcripts. So when you make an appointment with an advisor, please make sure your transcripts are here and hopefully they have been evaluated. Um, advisors can do course substitutions, um, but we just, you know, we cannot do that official evaluation. That is only the registrar. If you log into your self-service account, you can go up to student planning and there should be a transfer credit under the academics menu. And there you can see what credit you have received. It can take three to four weeks to process your transcript. So it's not immediate. And transcripts are only going to be evaluated after you have been accepted to Wake Tech. The one thing to watch out for is Wake Tech will award credit. It doesn't mean the nursing program will accept it, right? Um, the anatomy and physiology courses and the math course have time limits. 
So if you had a math class 20 years ago, if Wake Tech gives you credit, the nursing part department will not accept it because the math has to be within the past 10 years. You have the same thing with your anatomy and physiology course and your microbiology. To receive credit for those classes for the nursing program, they have to have been completed within the past five years. Wake Tech, the college, though, does not have an age limit, so you might see transfer credit. But if it's not within five years of beginning the nursing program, we cannot accept them for the program. So just be aware of that for the time limit on the biology and the math. We talked about being competitive. How do we award points? And right here, we're looking at the four classes for practical nursing. A's are worth four points, B's are worth three points, C's are worth two points. We multiply that by the credit hour and that will give you your points. English, psychology, and math are all three credit hours. So you can see from the chart, an A is worth 12 points, a B is nine, a C is six. Anatomy and physiology is a five credit hour course. So five times four, if you had an A, that's worth 20 points. But biology is an important concept that nurses should know because that helps you maintain life. So we place a lot of emphasis on that biology course. So those points are doubled. So you can see the anatomy and physiology is worth a lot of points. Points are only awarded for those classes. If you have AP credit that comes from high school or you have CLEP credit, your points will be equivalent to a B. And if we look at the past rankings for the number of points students received, in 2002, we had 52 applications, we accepted 11, and the point range was between 60 and 79. And in 2023, 57 applications, accepted 11, and the point range was between 63 and 91. So you don't have to have straight A's. You need a, you know, B's, you know, maybe a 3.3 to a 3.4 GPA. And if you're wondering why is the point range higher than the number of points you can receive, um, there is going to be a program requirement for the TEAS test. We're going to go over that and you can re receive points for the TEAS test also. And we'll cover that again. If you look at the nursing, there's no difference. Points are still awarded the same. A's are four, B's are three, C's are two. Multiply it by the credit hour. And for nursing, you have three biology courses. You have anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, and microbiology. And again, due to their importance, those are all doubled. AP and CLEP are still going to be worth a B. The nursing program does have a humanities elective, right? And it is an, it's an elective not because you can choose whether to do it or not. It's because you can choose which humanities or fine arts course you want to take to meet that class. You can choose art, you can choose music, you can choose religion, humanities. Um, There's several choices. You can always check with an advisor to make sure what you're taking does meet the requirements. We will accept only one humanities though. So you can't take three of them and we give you points for all three. We will only give you points for one humanities. And we will use the points from the class that has the highest grade. And if we're looking at the past rankings, um, you can see both program nursing receives over 200 applications. We accepted 80. And you can see that point range was 138 to 172 in 2023 spring. And it was 143 to 180 for 2022 fall. And those points that are higher than the total points, again, for the grades are from the T's test. Um, so you can see 138 and 148. That kind of puts you in that B, A, B range, right? So if you have all the classes completed and you only have Bs, that gives you 120 points. So you kind of need an A, B average to be competitive again for the nursing program. So some common questions about the nursing program. Um, even though the program planning guide shows the general education courses mixed with the nursing classes, students normally do not take the classes as they are laid out in the program planning guide because 
almost everyone who applies has all the general education courses completed for the points. It's very rare nowadays that a student applies without having all nine classes completed. So then why doesn't the program planning guide show like all the general education courses on top followed by the nursing classes? Well, that would kind of give the illusion that you could do the general ed courses and then immediately start the nursing classes. And that unfortunately is also not a true scenario because we can't guarantee anybody will accept the nursing program. Since it is competitive, students can apply and if they don't have the points um, to be accepted, then they they won't get in and that's why we really encourage everybody to have that parallel plan to have a backup plan in case you're not accepted you can retake classes we will award points for the highest grade do you have to have all classes completed well, no you don't you do not have to have all the classes completed to apply um, but if you don't have the classes completed, your points will be low. And if your points are low, you probably will not be a competitive student, which means you, you probably will not be accepted into the nursing program. And if you complete Biology 168, do you still need to take Biology 163 for practical nursing? Yes, you do. Biology 168 is only half the body system, um, so we can't accept it for 163. If you take the 168 with the 169, so both of those together, we will award credit for biology 163. All right, so how can you take the nursing classes? What is the, What are these program specific admission requirements that are not required by Wake Tech, but they are required by the nursing program? So as long as you've been accepted to Wake Tech, as long as you've met the prerequisites, you can register for those general education courses. To be able to register for the nursing program, you have to be able to submit a program application. So there's a program application specific for nursing, and there's another one specific for practical nursing. We do have windows for those applications. OK, so we don't accept them all the time. So if you're interested in our spring nursing program, so that would mean that the nursing classes started in January, you're, you could submit a program application between April 1st and July 31st. If you are interested in beginning our nursing program in the fall, fall begins in August, then that window is open October 1st through January 31st. And if you're interested in our practical nursing program that only starts one time a year in the spring, then that application is open from May 1st through August 31st. So the applications are online. If you're on the nursing page or the practical nursing program page, um, there is an admissions link. You click the admissions and that will take you to the admission requirements specific for the program and the application will be there that you can download and fill out. Once the application is completed, and it's in that window, you would submit that application to our email, hsadvising at waketech.edu. We do not accept applications early and we don't accept them late. So make sure you know the date and time and you have everything completed to submit those applications. What do you need to be able to submit those applications? So the nursing program requires you to meet six different things. You have to have a reading and writing proficiency, a math proficiency, science. Everybody has to take what is called the T's test. Everyone needs to be a nurse aide. And students have to verify their English language proficiency. This is attached to the application. And if you can't meet it, then you might need to take the TOEFL exam. So let's cover each of those. The first thing is demonstrating your reading and writing proficiency. Almost everyone is going to meet that requirement because you have completed English 111. So as long as you have completed your English 111 course, you have met the reading and writing proficiency. Otherwise, this slide gives you lots of different ways to meet it, but pretty much everyone's going to meet it by completing English 111. Next, you have your math. Math is a little confusing. So remember, we already mentioned it earlier, the math has to be within 10 years of the program application. 
It can be met many different ways. It could be um, a high school GPA. For our nursing students, it's a high school, an unweighted high school GPA of 2.2 or higher. For practical nursing, it's a high school GPA of a 2.8 or higher. It could be if you've completed an associate's degree or higher. It could be a placement test you took through the college. There's lots of different ways you can meet it, but it must be within 10 years of the program application deadline. This is specific to nursing. This is not a Wake Tech requirement. So you want to check your math and you might want to make sure to check with your health science advisor on your math. So practical nursing versus nursing, there's a math requirement, and this is important because if you plan to apply to both programs and you've met the math requirement for nursing, you might not meet the math requirement for the practical nursing program. So the nursing program, you can meet it just by having a high school GPA of a 2.2 or higher. That is all that's required so that you're able to take your chemistry course, your general biology course, um, and that's all you need. Practical nursing has a math class. You have Math 110 and you have to be able to take Math 110, which means that you're gonna need to have a high school GPA of at least a 2.8 or higher to meet requirements. Or if you have a college level math, you know, there's multiple ways you can meet it, but just watch out because the two aren't the same. So sometimes students meet the requirement for nursing, but not for practical nursing. Um, so check with the advisor to make sure you have your math correct. Next, you need your science proficiency. And the science proficiency is to make sure that you are able to register for your anatomy and physiology course. Biology 163 and Biology 168 have a prerequisite of chemistry or general biology. Either one can meet that requirement. So if you have had a college chemistry or a college biology class with a grade of C or better, you've met the requirement. If you've had high school chemistry, not high school biology, high school chemistry with a C or better, you have met the requirement. And then if you've completed general biology or if you've done Wake Tech's chemistry tutorial, you have met the requirement. Now, if you have already completed Biology 163 or Biology 168, and you've already met that, you've already completed those within five years of beginning the nursing courses, then that will meet your science proficiency also. You don't have to go back and take a chemistry. So you need to demonstrate a science proficiency. Next, you have the TEAS test. The TEAS test is the test of essential academic skills. This is a time test. It's comprised of four different sections, reading, math, science, and English. You will schedule to take the test through ATI. Um, you make your reservations. You will pay them for the test. You will take the test, and then you will have ATI send us your scores. This test is going to be expensive, so we do recommend that you, you know don't take it until after you've completed your math, you've completed your bio courses because you want to do well on this test. Please note that the TEAS test cannot be more than three years from the program application deadline. So you gotta have it within three years of applying. The composite score must be at least a 59% or higher. If it's below 59%, you cannot apply. And then finally, we do have a retest policy. You can test twice in a calendar year, and there must be 30 days between the tests. If you submit test scores that do not meet this requirement, we will not use them. And ATI does have the dates between all the tests listed. So we do verify that there are at least 30 days or more between each test date. We also super score. So what does that mean? When we get your test scores, if you've tested more than once, we're gonna look at each test. We round up your scores 
and then we will average them to give you your composite. And you can see from this example um, that the highest scores were on different test dates. And we will use that to determine your final composite score. And why is this important? It's because besides for your grades, you can earn points for your T's composite score. If you have a 71% or better, you're going to get six points. If you have an 81% or better, you will receive 12 points. And if you have a 91% or better, you will get an additional 20 points. And this can be helpful if maybe you have a, a you know, a lower GPA or your grades aren't as strong. The T scores might be what helps get you to a competitive range. So please study up for the T's test. Nurse aide. Everyone has to be a nurse aide. That means you have to complete a state approved nurse aide training program. You then have to take the exams to be listed on the North Carolina nurse aide registry. And you must be on the registry by the application deadline. There are no exceptions. So when planning your classes, you have to plan time to take this nurse aide class. And then your registry verification has to stay current through the first day of the nursing courses. So if your verification expires between the time of the application deadline and the first nursing class, you have to renew your nurse aid or else your acceptance will be rescinded. And what you're going to do to verify this is you're going to submit a copy of your North Carolina nurse aid registry listing. Now, the only exception to this is if you are already a nurse aid too. And if you're a nurse aid too, you're going to need to submit your verification of your listing from the North Carolina Board of Nursing and that listing must also be current. Our continuing education department does offer nurse aid classes. You do not have to take the class through Wake Tech. You just have to make sure that you have completed a nurse aid training program at any state approved facility. The North Carolina Nurse Aid Registry um, has a web page and it will have all the different programs and locations of where you can take the class. So when you look up your verification, you can Google North Carolina Nurse Aid Registry. It should bring you to the North to this web page. And CNAR, you know, so here's the verification. Down here at the bottom, you're going to need to lit, type in the last four of your social, your first name, and your last name. And once you do that, you're going to get a Nurse Aid One Registry Verification, which will list your name, your original test date, and your listing expiration date. And that listing expiration date has to be current at the time of the program application deadline. So you need to be listed on this. And this screen you can print as a PDF, and then you're going to attach it with your program application and when you send it back to us. So some common questions with the nurse aide. If you're already in healthcare, do you still have to be a nurse aide? Yes. You have to be on that registry unless you're a nurse aide too. You can always check with the North Carolina Nurse Aid Registry to see if they have any challenge exams. Sometimes they do for paramedics and medical assistants, but they change their policies. So you will just have to check with them. If you're trying to register for the nurse aid class, you can't do it through self-service at Wake Tech. You're gonna to have to go directly to Continuing Education. They have a webpage right there, nurseaid.waketech.edu. You can go directly to them. Do not wait to schedule a class because they do fill up. The nurse aid verification um, certification is good for two years. Um, don't let it expire. Uh, if you work as a nurse aide, it will be renewed. So if you're in the class and it expires, you know, if you can't get it done by the time of the program application, you need to wait until the next program application. All right. 
Finally is the English language proficiency. All students must verify they have met the English language proficiency requirement. This form is attached to the program application. This is not the English 111 course. This is, this is different. Again, this is a nursing program specific requirement. The information is on the web page. It's also attached to the application and you have six choices. So your first choice is my first language is US English and I have attended and graduated only from a US high school. A lot of people will check that if they have a GED or an online high school transcript. This is not going to meet the requirement. You still need to submit your partial high school transcript. So if you've submitted a GED, that meets requirements for Wake Tech and Wake Tech does not require anything else from you. The nursing department is going to require that verification that you were in high school. So please make sure you submit the transcript. As long as you graduated from a US high school, you're still good. If you completed high school outside of the US in a country where English is the official language, all you're going to need to do is on the form and ask which country this is at. The only statement, my first language is not US English and I have attended high school outside the United States. If that is your only option, then you will have to take the TOEFL exam. And the TOEFL exam um, needs to be done before the application deadline and we will need those scores sent to us before the application deadline. Everyone must verify it. The only people who have to take the TOEFL are, is the person, anyone who fills out and checks box number six. So, those are all the requirements for submitting a program application and trying to get into the nursing program. Your next steps, if you've already completed everything and you are ready to submit your nursing program application, make sure it's within the window. And you're going to need to submit that application and the nurse aid verification to HS Advising at waketech.edu. Make sure your official T scores are coming to us from ATI. Submit TOEFL scores if, if you need to. All right. And we need everything by that application deadline. If you don't have everything completed, you're new, um, welcome to Wake Tech. You need to register for classes and make sure you've been accepted. So you've submitted a Wake Tech College application. You have submitted all your transcripts. Make sure you activate your student account. Complete the new student orientation if needed. Apply for financial aid if needed. Um, and you can schedule an appointment. Anybody is welcome to schedule an appointment with a health sciences academic advisor. To schedule a virtual appointment with us, you're just going to go to waketech.edu. At the top of the screen, there's, um, I think it says menu and then login, choose menu and under menu, you can choose advising. When you choose advising, the middle of the screen will say contact an advising care team. When you click on that, it will say choose healthcare and wellness, and that will be us. And there will be a link to our bookings calendar and you can see there are several different appointments you can take. You can sign up for. Make sure you're aware of the time. If you just have a quick question or you're still not sure what you need to do to begin, then you can pick the shorter appointments. You can see the how do I begin appointment is 15 minutes. The quick question is 10 minutes. If you need advising, advising means you want to know what classes you need to take then you're virtual advising for 30 minutes for a new student or a first time student, or you can choose virtual advising for a current student, which is 20 minutes. All right, um, the review program application is for students who have submitted their program applications and now they, they want to review them. How many points do they have? What credits they have? All right, so make sure you pick the right appointment. Now, a few things before applying to the program, just realize that if you are accepted into the nursing program, you do have clinical requirements. These requirements are reviewed um, by the nursing program. Ms. Barbara Smith is the clinical compliance administrator. Um, 
it is whatever is required by our affiliate. So the hospitals will tell us what they want. And then Ms. Smith has to enforce those. So there are criminal background checks, there are drug testing, um, immunizations, physical exams, all of that information will be covered at the time. If you're accepted into the program, Ms. Smith will cover those. Sometimes people have concerns about a criminal background check. You can reach out to Ms. Smith about that. More than likely, you will have to have a criminal background check run if you want any answers, and then it would have to be reviewed. And then finally is just the time commitment. The general education courses can be, be completed in any order, right? They can be at night. They can be online. You can take one a semester. Once you're in the nursing program, all you're going to be focused on are those nursing courses, and those are going to be day only. Nursing 101, Nursing 111 are the first classes that you need. Nursing 101 is for the practical nursing program. Nursing 111 is for our nursing. And you can see the classes are on campus a lot. Nursing 101 is in class seven hours a week. They have six hours of lab and six hours of clinic for a total of 19 hours on campus. Nursing 111 has four hours of class and six hours of lab and six hours of, of clinic. So they're here 16 hours a week. That's not studying. That is completely being a student on campus. So if you feel like it's going to be about two hours per hour you have in lab and clinic and class, you're looking at almost 30 to 40 hours a week of, of studying. So a lot of times when students call up and they want to know the schedule, we tell students to expect day only and a full time schedule. It can be very difficult to try to work while you're in these classes because, you know, it's a whole new concept for you. Um, so we just forewarn people it will be a big time commitment for you if you're accepted into the program. I hope that answered a lot of your questions. If you still have questions, you're welcome to contact us. Our email is hsadvising at wagetech.edu. Or again, you can always make an appointment with us. Um, you can go to hsadmissions at .wagetech.edu and just click make an appointment. Thank you very much. We appreciate you were here. Have a great day. Bye-bye.